This week on 3D Archery, I'm going to show you how I set up a shot on a 3D course. Hey everybody, welcome to 3D Archery. Greg here. Alright, you know, you've seen me rebuild targets. I've actually ran an event, learned a lot, but I want to share with you maybe, you know, we can get things better when we talk about how to set up a shot, the thought process, and many things to consider. And there's a tons of things to consider, but what is the number one thing, right? It is the easiest thing, but it's the hardest. It limits us, it controls us. And that one thing is safety. And why is safety paramount? Well, mainly because of lawyers, right? And insurance. They're going to sue you. Insurance goes up, puts your club out of business. But it's also for the benefit of the archers. You want everybody who came here to leave in the same condition that they arrived in. And I don't mean inebriated. All right? Some people are arrogant, so they can leave arrogant. Some people are clueless, they can leave clueless. But physically speaking, we want everybody to leave the way they showed up. It's our responsibility to ensure that. So what I'm going to do today is I'm setting up a shot of a target I just made, all right? should say repaired. And I'm going to show you all the considerations of it. Now, I wasn't going to make this movie, so this movie I'm sort of making it on the fly. Because while I'm standing here looking at it, man, all these thoughts are running through my head. And it's when it dawned on me, you know what? Maybe I should share this. So what we're going to do first, I'm going to show you the area where it's at, the things that we got to consider, and then we'll work our way through it. All right, everybody, here I am on the course. Now, the target that we're going to work on today is target three, but right now, I'm actually at target two. So why am I showing you two? Well, you know, when you set up a course, you want variety. You don't want every shot to be exactly the same. It gets boring for the archers, right? So this is actually the back side I'm going to show you. Archers would come down that hill right down, the, right over there, right? They're going to walk down that hill, and they're going to shoot at stakes right here, to a target right behind the camera. And what's behind the camera? Well, that's a good question. What's behind the camera is one of the best shots you'll ever see. All right, yes, we're in Batmanville, but my camera's leaned over because I'm by myself, right? So allow me to adjust. There you go, right there. Very, not a hard target, actually pretty easy. You got a, got a uh, 11 inch by nine inch square in a tree they got to hit a deer from. I would say the youth and traditional stakes, about 15 yards. Compound hunters, about 20, and what they call top guns, about 25 yards out. Now this is an in-out target, which means they're going to shoot it, pull their arrows, come back, and they're going to head this way down the trail, and they'll be coming up onto our target next. All right, so let's head down the trail and go to the next target. Everybody, here we are. Target three. And you can see right next to it here is the Top Gun stake. Now, this target, which you're going to see in a second, is actually the field archery target. You know, like a lot of courses, the 3D and a field mimic each other. This one here to the bale house is probably about 32 yards. All right? So there's a bale house there, and I'm going to bring you in, and I'll show you all the stuff. We'll talk about it, and then we're going to work on our shot. All right, everybody, here we are. See, it's a walk-through target, so that's the first thing we got to know. They're going to shoot, and if you see down there by the bale house, there's an arrow. They're going to turn right and head that way up the hill to the fourth target. Now, the distance from here to target two, about 50, 60 meters, if that. All right, and I'm going to show you where all this comes into play. Now, both of them are shooting this way parallel to each other so we got to take that into account so I'm standing by the top gun stake right here is the hunter stake and then down there which you probably can't see is the youth and traditional stakes now I might move them depending on where I'm setting them up so my initial look on my terrain what do I have well there's a stream in front of me which you can barely see 
right? And then 10 meters, 10 yards, 10 meters, which ain't the same, I understand. In front of that is that little rock wall. And then about another 10 to 15 past that is the bale house. So he can go in that open area in front of the bale house. I could put him just to the left of the bale house between the tree and the bale house, right? I could also put him to the right of the bale house in that large open area. But if you look real close, which I'm going to show you here in a second, off to the left is a beautiful alley shot. But the problem is we're going to get close to that comfort zone for safety on that target over there. All right, but I'm going to bring you in. We'll show you that. So that's the basics I have to work with. Now we got to think about this. If you're doing a uh, course for an organization, they got set rules. So there's your first defining things about what your shot's going to be: ASA, IBO, World Archery, etc. Right? They have very strict rules and how far, maximum distances, minimum distances, da 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 da. -da. And the one rule that most of them have is you can have nothing, and I mean nothing, between you and the target. It has to be a totally clear path for your arrow. Now, whether you like that or not, it's for another video. But mine is a club shoot, so I have a lot more leeway to play with. I can make my shots more engaging, more fun. I can hide half the animal behind the tree, which I heard they're starting to allow in the IBO. All right, but you have to have a totally open scoring area. I know that much. All right, so we got that set up. We know what we're looking at. So I'm thinking about it, and I'm going to show you. We're going to go over here, and we're going to look at this one off to the right. I'm going to bring my camera over, which I'll do right now for you. All right, right down there. You can see this small bent tree there. There's a beautiful alleyway running right down there, and I think that that would be an awesome shot. They can shoot it from all the stakes where they're currently at, so I wouldn't have to move nothing. It's got change of terrain, makes range estimation a little bit harder. And it just looks good. The open ones are pretty simple. The terrain's open, easy to estimate distance. It's sort of like a no-brainer type of shot. All right, I'm going to move behind the camera. I'm going to zoom it in, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Okay, everybody, here we are. Now, right there... You can see the two stakes right there, and about three feet past it, it's a stream right there. There's the rock wall, and you can see all the open area running from here all the way over there that I can use, all the way back there, back there. So this little gap right here would be really nice, but like I said, that one between this tree right here and that over there, that would be awesome. Now, actually, the stake shot would look more like that. See that alleyway right there? I like that. That alleyway looks awesome to me. It's just calling out to me, but there is a downside to it. So that brings us back to here. So what I'm thinking is if I put it here, which, sorry, there's my finger. If I put it here, we use that all the time. We put it here, we use it all the time. But I'm really looking at this rock wall, but we gotta make some safety considerations, which we're gonna go up and look at next. Right now, I'm standing in that little alleyway, and I have a good line of sight to each stake. Perfect setup. This is the one that we were talking about that was off to the left. But what you can see, the problem with this shot is, if I put the target right here, which is where I want, or maybe a little bit farther, you can see over there about 15 to 18 yards, if that, is the deer in the tree target. So it's not the safest. Yes, I know they're all shooting there, Chance of ricochets over here are slim because most arrows hit the tree, but there's still that possibility. So this, this one's pretty much a no-go, but I would love to do it. Now our option would be somehow to move that deer and not use that hole in the tree, but it's not worth it. That's too good of a shot. So this one here, which looks so beautiful right here, is a no-go. Now just to show you what I meant, I'm standing here behind the camera. I haven't moved it. There's the deer. See, there's the hole. See the hole in the tree and the deer. Zoom out. Try to show you. That's what a. This here is pretty much what it looks like to my eye. Video cameras have wide lens, which we have, but. Our vision's a lot different than camera vision, right? The camera pulls it way back. That is not what it looks like to me. 
I can see the details on that deer. That's closer to what my eyes see. Now you can see maybe or understand a little better what I was talking about on our safety concerns. Our second option, like I said, would be to the right of the bale house here. It's not a bad shot. I can still, well actually I can't see the deer because of foliage. And there's trees not in the way. So safety, much lower of a concern here. But if I walk over here, I can look at the terrain. What do we got? We got a couple of rocks here. I got a rock here. Got this nice tree and an incline. You know, this ain't bad. If I put the animal here, one, it's just not an open shot. It's off to the side. If I put it here, I can see all four stakes, so we're good on that one. That's a good one. Now as I walk forward, here's this big, wide open area that I could totally use. But how many shots in a 3D course is the animal always out in the open? So I want to break that up. All right, so our next option, which we'll slide the camera over, we'll look to the one on the right. Here we are to the right. Now the one thing about the right, as you can see, I'll walk over here. This. Yeah, this is where the trail starts. I didn't see myself the camera. Sorry. This is where the trail starts, so that's not a problem. Um, not too bad back here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but if you look back there, there is water. Now it's all, not always there. This is a wetland part of the course. There's the stream to the front of us, and swamp all around here, and like that. So I could put them there. Once again, over here, looking at it, all four. Um, stakes have an open sight line to the target. So that's a good one. Now, first one that I loved, just from the visual, poor safety. Second one, good safety, moderate challenge. This one, great safety, no challenge. But I have one more, and this one I'm really leaning towards. Alright, my fourth option that I've seen possibly fifth, is right on the other side of this rock. Now, why the rock? Now here's the good side and let's look at the plus and the minuses, right? The plus is fantastic safety. We are actually in line with the deer. The deer's right there, about 30 yards over. So the odds of anything coming over here target-wise, next to none. Because you got to remember the tar archers are shooting on that side of the deer. They're going to come out here and pull their arrow. All right. So safety on that aspect is really good. Now the downside of safety is the rock. There is a slight chance that the arrow could hit the rock and come back. But why do I say slight? Because these rocks are on an incline. All right, They're leaning away from me. So hits, ricochets should go that way. They shouldn't come back at you. Now also safety is splinters, but the first two stakes are at least 10 yards away. Now for safety, I could push them back to about 14 to 15 yards and that should make it totally safe. The bonuses on this is you have the rock. In order to hit the target, depending on what one I put up, right? Means you gotta make a good shot. It's just something that gets in the archer's mind. They go, oh my God, look at that rock, look at that rock. Boom, and they hit the rock, which I can guarantee you, I would do. So there's my basic options. So what are we going to do? Well, the other thing we got to take into consideration in all this is the target we're going to use. Duh. So now let's show you my target. All right, everybody, here's the animal I'm going to use. It's the Wolverine from Reinhardt. Yes, they don't look like this one. This one was torn up pretty bad, and I repaired it, one-time repair. Since I repaired it, I went up and did some research and found out what they really look like, so I painted it to look like a real wolverine. And to make it a little more realistic, I put some fake fur in it like he's eating something. So this is my target. You can see he's not really small, but he's not a medium size. He's a size, good size of a small dog, right? Or a medium sized dog, I should say. Chihuahuas are small. This is a lot smaller than Chihuahua. Probably weighs more, too. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to put him in the different spots. Let's take a look at him and see what the shots look like. And maybe we can make a decision. All right, here we are. This is the no-go shop. Look why I love it. Now, I could remove these branches in the way, but I'm at the stake right here, shooting left-handed. Boom! Now, the target is not sideways. I can't stand total broadside. He is a quartered shot. But look at it. It's awesome. Now, I'm going to zoom you in. And I add a little bit to it. I put a little bit of a fake carcass on there, like 
rib cage area, added like a leg bone, some vertebrae, and a horn. Just to tie it all in, because once again, why put out just a target, people? Make something out of it. Engage the archers. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm telling you this. I wish we could find a spot like this. One, you're shooting over the stream. There's a stream right there at my feet running by. You got some branches possibly in the way, but there is a large enough gap. You should not hit them. Boom. He is about a 15... About a 15 to 16, 15 to 18 yard max. No more, it can't be more than 18. But 15 to 18 yard shot. You know what? One is wide open for you, but he's quartered and he's small. Makes it fun. All right, let me zoom you in and we'll take a look at him. Then I'll show you him from the farthest stake so you can see what they get to see also. All right, everybody, this is what I see from standing here looking at the target. This is about the same width of vision and everything. And you can see him wide open. I adjusted the camera. Here's the gap between the two tree branches. And there he is. One wolverine having lunch. He stops and what's he doing? He's looking at you going, oh my God, what, what is that human doing out here? That is the shot I would love to have, but pretty much a no-go due to safety. Right. Target, option two, to the left of the bail house. You know, it's not a bad setup, but it's the lighting. Right now, he's backlit, so all you see is the outline of the animal, and the light stripe does look really cool. So, you know, this ain't bad. From the Top Gun steak, a little over 30 yards. It's straight on, nothing in the way. Got a couple branches hiding his face, right? So you can't really see him, but if I moved up to the trad steak, probably see more. We'll stay up here, I'm gonna zoom in, we'll take a look at him, all right? Let's do that. All right, going in, and there he is. All right, one wolverine. Now you can see, much harder to see the carcass parts, but you can actually see it laying across the, there's a little log in front of him. Not a bad setup. He is not quartered like the last one. He's actually more of a broadside, so this would probably make a lot more archers happy. All right, now let's go to the next one, moving them to the right of the bale house. All right, everybody, here we are, option three, to the right of the bale house. Slight quartering, not much. Bring it back again. I'm at the Top Gun stake. About a 32-yard shot for them. And pretty much how I see it. A little bit more, a little bit less, doesn't really matter. But again, every stake has a clean sight line to it. Downside is the trad guys and the youth have a little farther shot. Again, about 15 to 18. All right, not bad, nothing special. Totally acceptable. But the question is, how good is good enough? And you know the saying, if you're saying it's good enough, it's never good. All right, everybody, here is the final option, which personally, I like the best. So you know what's, which one we're going to use, right? Looking at it from here, the Top Gun, yeah, it's not that far. 20 to 25. Back it up, show you. Whoops. Back it up, not go forward. There you go. That's what it looks like, right? Pretty simple. If they miss, there is plenty of woods behind them. You know, we got the tree just to the left of the target, the rock just to the front of it, and he's looking right at you, and it's a slight quartering shot. Now, I'm gonna take it on and show you the trad shot, which is too close to me, but I'll let you guys decide that too. Here we are, I'm on the trad use stake. Distance, 10 yards. Wait, perfect for the kids. It's a good one for the kitties. Um, trad, it's just too, I don't like close shots. I personally cannot stand close shots. I love it. He's looking right at you. He's got the fur in his mouth. He's like, Ooh. you know, it's one of those moments. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to back up. I'm going to place the trad stake back, make it about a 
15 yard shot or so and then we gotta do the final test which you know what it is I'm gonna shoot it all right so let's set it all up stakes and shots and let's see how what we think and I like your guys input on it you know which one did you like best we'll cover that in a minute so why am I battling I don't know it's just, it's just what I do all right everybody final test um, if you see in the downrange I had two holes just played with it earlier just seeing how things look, getting used to the sight picture in this. Why? Haven't shot it in a year. Uh, you're probably saying, grass pretty ugly bow there, Greg. Why, well, thank you. I made this with scrap wood in my basement. It's a takedown. Using Samix Sage limbs. I am using two arrows today. My go-to arrows, which I use for everything. My go-tip traditional XTs. 600 spine, 145 grain head. With four feathers, five inches long. And I also have these red, white, and blue ones. They are Eastern Axis 600s with 145 grain heads, same feathers. Much heavier here, look, oh, these are all straight. These babies are heavier and they fly slower. These fly much faster and I'm just having a heck of a time. Now the other thing about them is this. This bow is cut well past center. So what does that mean? Well, that means this bow does not have Archer's Paradox. I do not, I do not experience Archer's Paradox. The bow doesn't actually have it, I experience it, okay? So, when I shoot this, I, all my other bows are not cut to center, so I have Archer's Paradox in all my bows. So when I look at it, my arrow's never on target, it's always facing off it. This one's on. And I, I don't, you know, when I shoot, I'm just so used to my sight picture, my arrow being slightly off, so I'm shooting slightly to the left today. Let's see what we do. My stake's right here, I'm gonna move over. Let's see how it goes. Not bad, not bad. You know, not the best shot. Like I said, you can see I'm slightly to the left. Now let's try one of these Eastern Axis babies. I'm nervous on this because these suckers, they fly. <laughs> Again, to the left, right? All right, one more. Let's try a gold tip. Oh, that could be why. There we go. Ah, okay. Side picture, like I said. All right, boys and girls, that is it. Which one did you like? Did you like that one over there that's a no-go due to safety? All right. Did you like the one to the left of the bale house, the one to the right of the bale house, or one by the rocks? All right. Target set up, don't just put them out in the open. Take some time, look around, use the terrain, use what you got. Ask yourself, why is this animal here? All right? It makes a better experience for the archers, and the archers will appreciate it. And I can guarantee you, word of mouth will increase when you have more people coming to your shoots. All right, boys and girls, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this video and you got some tips, please, please feel free to share for everybody. You know, that's what we're trying to do here, trying to make a community where we can share information. All right, see you next time with an all-new episode of 3D Archery. I'm going to shoot some more.